All right. So, so we're going to talk about the disease of addiction. And it's a disease that looks like bad choices and bad morals and stuff like that. I'm going to stand. But the more we know about it, it's a, it's a brain disease. And it turns out that right in the middle of the brain, we have what we call a pleasure center. Now, why do we have a pleasure center in our brain? See, this part of the brain is the thinking part. This is where we make decisions, the frontal lobes. The pleasure center, why would we have a pleasure center? So, so we can procreate. So reproduce. Survival. Survival. Right. Because really it's about food and fluids and sex. Right? And this is the automatic part of the brain. It's the part of the brain that keeps you going when you're asleep and stuff like that. And the bottom line is it's full of dopamine. And when we satisfy our survival needs, we release dopamine, right? Increased dopamine. What's an example of that? Uh, eating, food. I mean, okay. in other words, if you're incredibly hungry and you um, eat something yummy, dopamine goes off in your brain and you go, wow, that was really good, or sex and stuff like that. Now, memory circuits are right around here, so this is part of the way it works, too. You see a picture of a big milkshake in McDonald's that's covered with sweat, and you're hungry, and it's like, oh, I want that, because dopamine's firing in your brain. Peter, is all, is, it, is all of this just a theory, or can we no. actually crack no, it? No, no, you can take it. You know, yeah, yeah, the dopamine. Yeah. This is the ball of dopamine, right? Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's right in the nucleus accumbens and the limbic and the um, um, locus ceruleus. And they, and they can take PET scans and, and fancy brain pictures of this stuff now. So you can take someone who is like a recovering cocaine addict or something, and you can show them a picture of some white powder, and dopamine goes crazy in their brain because they think they're going to get it. And when it goes off, they get cravings and stuff like that. So it's all very scientific these days. Now, so wait, what? What if you didn't have a pleasure center? Would you starve to death, or would you? Yeah, you'd forget to eat. You'd forget to procreate, and that's actually what happens to a drug addicts. I mean, you'll see people on the streets who sort of forget to eat. You know, cocaine addicts and stuff will tell you that, oh, it's really good for sex. But if you look at someone who's at the end of their addiction, they they're not interested in sex <laughs> at all, and they've lost pounds and. You know, they literally, if you put a monkey in a cage and give them all the dopamine, that all, I mean, all the cocaine they want, just IV thing, they press the lever, they'll stop eating and they'll die of starvation within about 30 days because they'd rather get the dopamine the from the drugs. But we'll get to that. So you've got a pleasure center, you've got an automatic part of the brain that, that is absolutely necessary for survival. It's an incredibly strong part of the brain is the next point. Um, and an example of that is our friend Bill Clinton who um, <laughs> the most powerful man in the, in the world at the time, sitting in the, in the White House, got him married with a young daughter. And, you know, some girl flashes her panties at him, and his dopamine system says, let's do it. And the thinking part of his brain has got to be saying, are you nuts? Five minutes of pleasure, and you're going to throw away potentially millions of dollars in a book deal and the <laughs> wrath of the people and your disappointment of your daughter and that wife of yours. and the pleasure center wins yeah. the pleasure center says damn right <laughs> <laughs> so that's how powerful the dopamine system is so that brings us to drugs all addictive drugs produce about five times the dopamine that your brain was ever meant to get and that's why we love them that's why alcohols are you know hundred billion dollar a year industry, whatever it is, because we love the dopamine feeling. You know, it just feels good. It feels really good. And that's why we're all overweight and McDonald's and everything like that is able to sell us products that, you know, release extra dopamine. That's why the food industry, a new book's just come out called Fat, Salt and Sugar, you know, optimizes food because it releases maximum dopamine in your pleasure center. And we love it. The amazing thing is that 90% of the people can handle alcohol and can handle pot, can handle being put on Percocet or whatever without going crazy with it. They get a dopamine rush and then they go, well, that was kind of fun, but, you know, I wouldn't go out of my way to get it. But 10% seem to be born with what I call a deficiency in the dopamine. 
I tell people they're kind of born with maybe only 97% of their normal dopamine. And so 97% of your normal dopamine is fine. It's like being either 5 foot 10 or 5 foot 10 in a corner. It doesn't make any real difference to the quality of your life until you do one thing, and that's stimulate it with drugs. When you take something that floods it with dopamine and you were a little deficient, your brain kind of goes, whoa, that's a fabulous feeling. I want that. And when it wears off, you kind of want to keep doing it even though it's against the law or even though it gives you a hangover or even though it costs money, even though it hurts your liver, whatever the other negative consequences are. Hey, Peter, somebody with a 10% deficiency in dopamine, are they more This is 10% of the population. Oh, it's 10% of the population right. we have. What's the percentage of, of, uh, of deficiency? Of the dopamine. I tell people it's a 3% deficiency. That's, that's, my, that's my numbers. And, and it's such a small deficiency that when people stop using drugs and they're happy with their 97%, they have plenty of pleasure. Okay. They enjoy life. It's not like they're walking around with no pleasure, with, no, with misery. Is it the, is it's, it the, it's only a problem if they try to boost it. it, so is it my, I guess my question was, is it the, the same people, that, that same cohort, if you will, who have the deficiency in dopamine, are they the people who tend to suffer from depression? And other no, other depression's problems? a whole different issue. Okay. Depression is found in, uh, close around that, that's a serotonin oh, deficiency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's, but it's completely addiction, and that's why you're, it's a good question, though, because uh, 